Griffin. Uh, uh, and he, he was a little slow to get going with the injuries. Where, uh, where is his progress been to get to the point he was for Saturday night? Yeah, I just I think his uh, comfort level with the playbook and the stuff that we're that we're doing. And then I just I think through the first three games he got got in there, got some experience, particularly in that Montana State game. Kind of got his feet wet and uh, and just a lot of learning experiences through those first three games and, and didn't continue to practice. So I think just comfort level and it was awesome because we, we saw the ability um, you know all, all camp and it was great to see him go out there and have a, and play well. Does he have a particular skill set that, that maybe if you, some of your backs other guys don't have or, or a little different? Um, he's got he's got a little burst, a little I think uh, that potential for to hit the, the big play. Not not saying that the other guys don't, yeah. um, but I, I do think he's got a little quicker, um, a little bit more, a little bit more twitch maybe to, to, to get uh, to create some explosive plays. Yeah. And uh, we had some nice runs Saturday. How would you uh, describe uh, Chance's demeanor after the last game and how he's kind of you know put in that? Yeah, he, he was down. Obviously, I mean, it was uh, you just look at the look at the stat line and you know, for any time he was turning the ball over four times a QB. I mean, he's I think he was down. You know, more so just uh, you know we're a really tight team and, and uh, felt like man the defense had, had, a, had a great performance, played really well, and uh, we were right there at the end of the game. Had a chance to be the top ten team at home in front of an awesome crowd, and I just I think he was frustrated because he just didn't play quite as good as he, as he was capable of, of playing. But I, I told him after the game, I said I was, I was pleased. Many, you know, offensively didn't have our best stuff, but we found a way to take the lead. So some of you at camp, um, kind of slow to get going. I know you had an injury. What what kind of got you going this season and where you're at? Uh, preparation. The trainers getting me back healthy. I had hurt my, my hip flex a little bit, but uh, they got me right back to where I need to be to perform. When you're, when you're in a competition like that and you, and you got a setback like that, how, how tough is that to, you know, you want to get in there and show you can do, but mm -hmm. you weren't able to do it? I mean, it's a part of the game. It comes with it. I mean, it's just got to, when stuff like that happens, you just got to, you know what I'm saying, think about the positive that can come out of it. You just get better each day to get back where you need to be. But the, you, you played four years in college. Was Saturday night probably the best game you've had? Yeah, yeah, I can say that. That's probably my best game. What, what seemed to work for you? What, what, what the holes there? Or what, what, were you seeing things? What, what? I mean, our, our offensive line did a great job Saturday, but uh, I, just, I just had a little more edge to me. I think my parents was there. It's the first game they came. They ain't oh. seen them. I ain't seen my parents in like two months. Oh. That's that's hard. That's that's different because I was at Tech. I, that's like an hour away from where I'm from, so I could just see them every day if I wanted to. But I ain't seen them in a minute, so I mean, I had to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Generally speaking, where does that edge come from? I just like to run with a purpose. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to die easy, go down easy. So you know, I feel like if a defender want to tackle me, they're going to have to feel all of me. You know? yeah. So you're kind of looking for contact then? It's, uh, sometimes. Yeah. Just set the tone, get, get the guys in the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Score go ahead, touchdown against the number seven team in the nation there in front of a packed house. Uh, rowdy crowd. Is that the type of moment that you've dreamed about for a while? I dream, I dream of stuff like that as a kid. But, like I said, the preparation that we had during the week, it led, it led up to moments like that. You know, offensive line, <laughs> offensive line, uh, lot pretty good on that play, for sure. We were seeing what's going on at your old school last week. Yeah, yeah, I've been seeing it, but I've been, I, I didn't, you know, so I'm focused you know, over here. You know, so I'm over here. Now that you're healthy, and, and the fact that there are so many guys on on your team that can run the ball, how how hard is it to kind of wait your turn, and wait for your opportunity? Coach, Coach Stu does a great job rotating us and getting, getting us opportunities. So, I mean, once I get in, I just do, do my best for the team, do, do what I can do. And then everything else just comes. You feel like you're back to 100%? Well, you guys haven't seen 100% yet. But it's almost there. Yeah, yeah, almost. Is it kind of a fine line as a back? Like, you probably want to get the ball every time, but you know it's going to crush you. Yeah. Even in the NFL, there's so much rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it like kind of a balancing act of the way you want? I like, the, I like the rotation. I'm not a guy that wants 20 carries a game. I'm good with the 12, and I'm going to do the most with them, you know. But, yeah, so I'm going to keep it keep us, keep us fresh. And Coach Stu does a good job with that. I mean, after you, you had a couple of situations Saturday where I think you ran for like 10 and then 12 yards back-to-back -back runs. Don't you want to 
stand there and see if you can <laughs> see if you got a heat check maybe and, and, and go for something even more in the next carry or uh no I, I mean i like the rotation i mean if i'm tired i mean the next person up is probably better than me while i'm tired so i mean i understand why, why i'm coming out so yeah you guys gotta kind of be tight for that to work though yeah, yeah we, we all close they got a good relationship with everybody we, we help each other get better what have you seen out of Chance the last couple of days? Obviously a tough, tough day for him the other day. Have, how have you seen his demeanor change, or has it, or what, what do you see out of him? Chance is a guy, man. He's going to come and compete every day. And I got I got faith in my guy. And a lot of people don't see, I mean, obviously, we're talking about the interception, but a lot of people don't see behind, like, what happened leading up to the interception. And, uh, yeah, Chance is going to be good. He's going to be good for us, for sure. Bounce back days, uh, you know, a lot of people was more focused on the details and not really trying to hone in to what we did wrong, but remember basically getting back to the basics, not focusing on the outcome usually, but just focus on the process. Remember what you did to get here and all that other stuff. So we just today just focus on getting back to the basics and getting back to ourselves. Is there a little extra kind of bounce in your step knowing that it's like, okay, that happened against an elite team, but we kind of get another elite team right away. We get an opportunity again right away. Yeah, it, it gives us that motivation, honestly, uh, to, you know, get back out there and get another opportunity. You know, uh, they're the reigning Pac-12 champions, and this one means a lot more to us, uh, I would say. So um, after that tough loss, you know, we we got that feeling in our gut that we don't want to feel anymore and remember how that felt. So, uh, like I said, we got to go out there and, you know, give our best effort and uh, show another team out there because – but like honestly, we just gave it to the USC, and that's something that we need to work on. And we watch film and notice that it's right there. We just got to hone in as a group and, and get things down correctly. You know, um, one sound, one team. So that's how we got to live this thing. You know? After uh, a night like Chance had, I imagine he was a good talent. Do you go up to him and try to pick him up or anything like that? Do you give him space? How do you approach something like that? Uh, yeah. Chance, is, Chance is one of those dudes who. You know that it's gonna take on that ownership. It's gonna take on that responsibility. And I text him sitting after the game, letting him know that you know it's not his fault. You know we we win as one and we lose as one. So regardless, uh, it's it's not on you. And that's what we gotta preach in the whole room, not in the whole room, but in the whole locker room, to defensive players, special teams, and all that. Like it's not one player, you know, who to blame on these games. You know, we all are a team, and that's how we came in as. So we gotta play as one. And don't we'll get the results like that you know even with the uh errors we had we were still in the game so no matter how many picks he threw he was still having a uh, you know a good game to the point where we're still in the game so yeah, we just gotta you know we just gotta erase those and not ruminate on those situations those bad plays and move forward and that's something we didn't really focus on this game you know so we just gotta we gotta respond more than react so that's what we gotta work on when you text him what was his response uh, I texted him, you know, like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm proud of you regardless. You kept your head up. And, you know, he just responded back with, yeah, you know, I know. Uh, I'm taking full responsibility. Uh, just got to get back to this next week. Get back to work. Do what we usually do because he obviously knew that wasn't him. And that's uh, words from, from Chance directly. And, you know, I, I, I love that dude. I love the whole quarterback room as a whole. Those guys hold each other accountable no matter what, who's on the field. And they're all leaders. They all get the offense going, and they all are vocal people on the field and off the field. So. Did you see, like, just the normal chance today? Is he back to himself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah every, I feel like everybody's back to themselves. You know, even on Sunday practice yesterday, uh, two days ago, we were everybody was talking. Everybody was conversating. Everybody was focused on this one, the Utah one. Everybody erased that one and wanted to, you know, have that – that burn in their stomachs to get back on the field and to win this next one because we know how much this one means to us, especially going away, especially having the the people saying what they want to say about us playing in the weight games. You know, it's going to be tougher, but I feel like this week is, is one that we, we got to put everything together. We got to get back to ourselves. Everybody can't just mope around and, and lose twice. You know what I'm saying? We can't let USC beat us twice. In that case, we can't ruminate on that one going to Utah mad about USC. Look, we have another opportunity. It's one game. We have about eight more or however many we want to be. So we've got the opportunity to do some big things this year. We just can't ruminate on the losses, like I said. What are you seeing out of Jam in his short time in the, the uh, program here? I'm seeing I'm seeing him being locked in as 
as as a running back. You know, the that room is stacked every year. I see, you know, it's guys making plays all around the field at the running back position, but those guys hold each other accountable. Those guys encourage each other. Like, you'll see Deshaun Fenwick after Jam scored, you know, congratulating him. He was the first dude, and that's what you that's what you love to see in a group. You know, everybody's competing on the field, but at the end of the day, we're all brothers, we're all family, and if we treat each other like that, we're all going to just, you know, play as if. We're all going to have those big games. Jam finally got him, you know, an opportunity to showcase what he could do against a, a, a top-tier team in the nation. So, you know, uh, I'm very proud of those guys in the running back room. Obviously, when our run is good, our pass is good because those guys hone in on the run game and open it up a little downfield for us. So uh, we appreciate those dudes for always coming in, giving us giving those great runs, giving us great blocks as well for the quarterback. So ultimately, I, I respect all those running backs, but Jim totally had a great game uh, overall. It's like Utah typically does a lot of man. Outside, does that put more on you guys? Obviously, to, to do your thing to get open, like you feel like you make plays, sort of a thing. Yeah. So when when they, when they're playing man, you know we we want to treat it as if we're in a track race and those guys are even and next to you, we're leaving. So expect the ball to come up to you. So uh, we find those man coverages, type of defenses, those type of defenses that show one look don't really uh, shift to the next. You know, keep it traditional. We 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 got to take advantage of that, especially being smaller wide receivers and faster wide receivers um you know we treat everything like a track race just always treat everything like you're going vertical and that's gonna uh get the defenders to back up even more um so like i said watching film on utah we know what they bring they always have top tier defensive backs and secondary so this is going to be a challenge for us we know they have have some guys over there that we've seen a couple years who's uh highly touted in you know in the, in the draft and everything so it's just going to give us an opportunity to get better and obviously get an opportunity to showcase what we truly can do on the offensive side as a unit and um, have those big plays that we need because, um, like I said last week, we just wasn't there. We just got to get back to ourselves. After the game, Brandon Kipper gave a pretty impassioned speech just about this team's resilience and how you're going to bounce back. Were there any of those type of speeches directed at the team in the, in the wake of this game? Any kind of motivational speeches that happened after that? After the USC game? Yeah, or was it just not even needed? You guys just understand? Yeah, you know, as soon as we got to the locker room after the loss, we knew we knew what that was going to feel like. We knew all the pressure that was coming into this game. And uh, we, we we just had a couple of guys talk to us. Kipper, Jaden Grant had us going in there. Tristan Jebby is one of those dudes who really gets the offense, you know, back into their, back into their right mind. And, Tristan is one of those dudes I remember, you know, coming into the locker room, coming up to the White House, and even Chance the quarterback, and many pods in the locker room, encouraging everybody, you know, like, we wanted that one against USC, but it wasn't one that we technically needed. It's not going to mess us up going, trying to accomplish to get into the Pac-12 championship. So we just, like, like he said, uh, Tristan just told us that, you know, we got to move forward. We got a big one next week. Utah so this is the one we really want last year you know they probably had the chip on their shoulder after losing to us so it's going to mean a lot to those guys um, us coming to their home you know they're going to do their best they can to defend and not help not make us come up there and you know shock the world again but that's what we're planning on doing and uh, we just got to preach that to each and every one of our players on this team is just always stay motivated and never lose yourself never lose your mind because we lost one game you know season and if you just continuously work on whatever you've been doing and sticking to the basics, it's all going to pan out. Just don't overreact. You know, think too much about things. Think too much about losses and what you did wrong. You know, because you're always going to have the opportunity to correct that.